Hello and good morning to everyone here. Uh, my name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education for Trade Station Securities. And it's a pleasure to doing this masterclass session where we're gonna highlight news and time and sales. These are applications within the Trade Station desktop that are probably not talked about a lot. And that's why I'm doing a session that highlights them. And, and that way you can be aware of all the functionality that's included in them, all right? So before we get started, of course, we have to do some important disclosures. Every symbol and idea that I talk about in this presentation is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of trade station. Also, active trading is not suitable for everyone. And past historical performance is no guarantee of, fut of uh, future results. For additional information on these disclosures, please visit our website. The link is right there on that PowerPoint slide, www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. All right. Thank you guys for being here. Let me switch over to my Trade Station platform. And that's where we're going to base our presentation on. I see many people here that are new. Uh, so thank you for joining the masterclass. Um, every day we do a different topic. It may seem like um, there's no structure to or the or, or a sequence to the live sessions. Um, as I've said at the very in many other sessions, is that we're working really hard to organize everything. Um, we are working on um, sort of a top ten in the masterclass. So based on the views and the clicks that we get on the videos, uh, we decided that there are there's a collection of videos that are the most popular. And um, we're going to redo them into a collection of uh, videos. And it's probably going to be available in the You Can Trade website as a course, which is um, going to be interesting. So, uh, but usually what we do in the getting started, I'm sorry, in the master class, and I just realized that I didn't send out, you know, the full schedule. I just sent out the message for today's class. So I apologize for that. I'll do that right after I finish this class. I'll send out the full schedule for the week. Every week we have a different schedule, not in not, not in regards to time, but in regards to topics. But um, usually we try to stay true to the main categories. For example, on Mondays, we usually highlight certain features of the platforms, like we make it a platform essentials presentation. On Tuesdays, we um, tend to do technical analysis. On Wednesdays, we do strategy trading. On Thursdays, we do easy language. And on Fridays, we do, again, platform essentials. So we have two platform essential presentations a week and one technical analysis, one strategy trading, and one easy language. In addition to those sessions that we do on a weekly basis, we have recurring guests. We have David Russell that comes in every other Tuesday and uh, provides us his market commentary. By the way, you're gonna notice his absence during the month of April starting, well, not tomorrow. Tomorrow, he's going to be here with us. But right after tomorrow, I'm not sure if he's uh, talked to you guys about this, but he's going on paternity leave and he won't be available for the masterclass for about a month. So we're going to miss him immensely, <laughs> but we're have, we'll have other, you know, uh, masterclass sessions to fill in. Uh, we also have another recurring guest. His name is John Brook. He's our in-house easy language expert. And he also does a session every other week. Uh, we're going to have him next Tuesday. I mean, next one, next Thursday. If it's not, if it's not confusing as it is, <laughs> just making it more confusing as I go along. Right. Every other Thursday, we have John Brook as our in-house easy language programmer. And on top of that, just to give you a little bit more um, opportunities to you know customize your trade station platform, we have two. As the, uh, as the trade station experts. These two sessions, one is on Tuesdays at 11.30 and the other one's on Friday at 11.30. So if you have any questions about the trade station technology or there's something that you've been working on and you haven't been able to find the right answer, that's uh, the type of session that, this, that, this, um, that it addresses. So I'm glad that we can offer everyone that those sessions and, and um, look at the calendar. It's posted on the coaches alert on the right hand side and uh, I'm going to do that right after I finish this class. So thank you guys for being here. Today we're going to talk about news and we're going to talk about time and sales which are two applications right here on the trade station platform 
Uh, right here under apps, everything is sorted in alphabetical order. So if you find news, it's right here. Time and sales is somewhere here. Where's my time and sales? Maybe it's on a third row. Hold on. Apps. No, I'm going to make this larger. There we go. Hmm. This is interesting how it rearranges. This. So, okay. Um, here it is. So it's not alphabetical order. That's interesting. Maybe they added the feature back where you could rearrange the icons here. If I take this time and sales and I put it where it should, there we go. Now it, it saves it. I'm not sure if it's saved on, on exit. I know that for a period of time, you were not able to drag um, buttons inside of the apps, or at least you know you were exiting out of trade station and it would reset back to default. But um, having the ability to rearrange these buttons makes a lot of sense because I mean, you can put them in the order that you use them more frequently. Mm -hmm. So James is just confirmed that it doesn't save. All right. I agree, Jim. I agree that it should save, um, but um, okay. So it doesn't save. Uh, let me just test it here. You know, I just moved it over here in alphabetical order um, where it should be. Because I mean, they're all in alphabetical order. What I find curious is, Jim, that I hadn't touched it and my time and cell was up here. So it seems like it remembered where it was. Let me, let me take chart analysis and put it right here in um, first place, like over here, second place, right? Let's go ahead and uh, close out of my trade station platform. And I'm just gonna go ahead and reopen it again and see what happens. So as you can tell, this is a session that not only highlights functionality and trade station, but uh, we try to make it a conversation between all of us so we can, you know, tackle what trade station is all about. You know, it's 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 a great technology, very sophisticated, and sometimes uh, we need to be able to identify issues and be able to resolve them. So let's see. I'm gonna go here to apps. So it remembered it, Jim. Have you tried it recently? Because it seems like it's working now. And my time in sales, look where it is now. So try it on your side, Jim. And maybe I'm not, I'm not using anything special here. This is the regular update 60 that's available to everyone. Unless update 60, I'm like, this is update 62, I'm sorry. Unless, unless, yes, wow. Unless you're using an update, you shouldn't be using an update that it's older. And maybe update 61 if you haven't gotten 62 yet. Uh, remember that when we do a new update of trade station, we usually um, release this in a gradual basis uh, so that we can identify any potential issues that there, that, that there may be. So uh, if you don't have 62, you should be getting it very soon, but everyone should be either 62 or 61. Yeah, I agree, Jim, I agree. All right, so let's go over here to apps and let's go over here to news. Steve, I see your issues with the sound. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, if it's a is it an it, do you, anybody else having issues with sound? Because a lot of times, you know, refreshing the browser sometimes, you know, um, gives you a better connection and that works. Okay, so I it seems like we have some good connections here because it could be me. I know that a couple of weeks ago I was having some nasty internet issues and I was like I had to even cancel one of the masterclass sessions because I couldn't I couldn't keep our I couldn't hold the connection. So I'm glad that it's um not the case here. So refresh the browser. Sometimes that gives you a better connection. So this is my news window. As you can see, I'm sure if you saw this, but this is something that was changed. Let me close out the news application one more time and I'll show you what's different. Let me go here to apps and let me just go over here to news. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm not sure if you guys remember the way that the news application worked, but when you opened it up, it actually prompted you to specify what news you wanted. Hmm. It seems like now they've decided to open up the news window with all headlines already applied, which, you know, it's a little bit user, it's a little bit user friendly, a little bit more user friendly than what it was before, because um, if you were not familiar with the functionality, you were kind of faced with this dialogue uh, prompting you to enter your news details. But now at least it's giving you some information. It's giving you all headlines. So let's talk about this because all the headlines is a filter that gives you everything that is provided by our news provider. 
Uh, one thing that I don't like about the way that the news window um, is displayed is that it's very um, simplistic in the sense that it doesn't give you any graphics. Um, I like my news with graphics because graphics sometimes get your attention better than just plain text. A lot of people like this format better because it's just straight news, but you have to sit there and, and read um, the, the, the headlines in order to know what the news article is about. Sometimes the graphics are, are so telling that you just have to look at a graphics and it tells you exactly what the news article is about. If you double click on any of these, like for example, if I double click on the very top one, which is an exclusive um, headline, it says, well, not anymore. It says LI Metal analysis trading on the OTC and DTC eligibility. If I double click there, of course, it provides me the news article. You know, that's very convenient. I don't have to have a window showing me the, the, new, the text for the news article. So let's double click on another one. I'm going to double click on see why did FDA extend review period for alnilams with Trisha. And this is a medication, I suppose, pharmaceuticals. Sorry if I butchered the name of those medications, but um, double-clicking on any of the headlines provide you the body or the content of that news article. And you can see that these news articles are not graphics. They don't, they're stripped of all the graphics. If you don't want to double-click on the headlines and you want to see a preview of uh, the headline or the content itself, you can go to the settings button right here on the top of the news and um, select story pane. Story pane is kind of the panel that provides you the article uh, relating to that headline. The story pane, I clicked it. When I did that, it seemed like it disorganized everything, but um, there's dividers here that you can push down and up. You know, there's a divider here and there's a divider here. So make sure that you're using them so that you can see what's going on in the news window. But now with the reading pane or the preview pane, I'm able to just uh, go through all the different news articles here and see the content without having to double click on the headline. Sometimes that's convenient. By the way, if you're asking who is our news provider, it is Benzinga. So I'm not sure if that's specified somewhere here in the small print. Uh, it says any forecast. No, this is just a disclaimer for the news article, not for the news window. But yeah, if you go to settings and you go to, or you go to data and you go to search news, search news is what brings up the dialogue that you would see the first time you opened up the news window. But here, I wanted to come here because I wanted to check out the providers. And um, it's grayed out. It's the only provider that we have on the Trade Station Data Network. Many years ago, we used to have a premium news service. Uh, I believe it was called the Dow Jones News something something. Uh, we don't offer it anymore. We just have straight news. Uh, we figured that you know news was something that you can get very easily um, in a lot of websites. So sometimes you know paying for news what's kind of uh, unnecessary because a lot of the news providers out there are, are very timely in providing, you know, information about what's going on in the market, at least public information, right? So Benzinga is our provider and everything you see inside of the news window comes from Benzinga. Um, we're going to come back here and show you how you can make some modifications when you, when it comes to filter and so forth. But let's go and talk about navigating the window and some other things you can do. Of course, this is all, all headlines. This is like a, a fire hose of information directed at you and sometimes uh, making sense out of the news windows like this, it's really tough. The news application in TradeStation allows you to do some very interesting filters and, and symbol specific news articles. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna go here to data and I'm going to search news. Hmm. Take a look at the difference here. And this is something that I've, I've mentioned to our engineering department, and you'll see a little difference that I'm gonna share with you when you right click versus clicking on data. If you go to data, uh, you only get the option to search news. Now, if you right click inside this top left panel and you go to data, 
not only you get the option, well, you don't, you don't get the option here. Search news is separated from the menu, from the data menu. And over here on the data, you get add news filter, which is what I was looking for because, yeah, I may, I may want to see an all headlines to see everything that's coming through. But at the same time, I may want to add symbol specific news filter that give me a more concentrated view on a particular topic for a particular company. So let me go ahead and do that. Instead of clicking on data up here, which does not give me the option to add a filter, I'm going to right click in this panel on the top left, go to data, and I'm gonna say add news filter. And right here at the very top, I'm gonna to say this is um, Apple, just the name of the corporation. So I'm going to select symbol here. I'm not gonna do all headlines anymore. And I have to then type in the ticker symbol for Apple. That's all I need to do. Here, the name can be anything that you want. This is like a custom name and um, just make it as descriptive as you can. You know, I'm calling it Apple because I wanna receive news on Apple on this news filter. And once I click okay right here at the bottom, that's what it does. See, Apple shows up right here on this filter panel. I see the headlines and all these headlines must either be based on Apple Corporation or at least mention Apple inside of its news article because it does both. Sometimes not even related to Apple, but Apple is included in the discussion. So it's very interesting. Uh, let's see. And you can see how long ago that news article came through. So you have the H, which is hours, one hour, two hours. And you have the D right here, which is days, one days, two days, and so forth. There is a number. Let me go here to search news and go to settings. Yeah, in the settings tab, it says number of days to load. And it's set to 10 days, just to give you a little bit more history. Um, I'm not sure how far our historical database goes in regards to news, but uh, sometimes you have to get uh, some um, older articles to see some very interesting information. Um, but maybe anything older than 10 would be a little bit too outdated. Not sure, maybe you have a different impression. So we have the setting here to allow you to modify this. If you only want to get news that are uh, relevant today or at least that have been sent today, then you can adjust that as you please. You have a date range type of thing here if you wanna range for, from one date to another and the initial number of headlines to load, 25, which is you know a, a sizable amount, but sometimes if you wanna do more, you can. Let's go back to the all headlines filter though and show you something interesting. In the all headlines filter, yeah, I'm not sure how many news articles are here, but um, as you keep this uh, news window open, it should increment the number of news headlines. So uh, on the initial start, it'll load up 25, but then it'll just continue to add uh, news articles. It's just funny that in the last five minutes, I haven't gotten a news article. You know, I thought that this would be a little bit more time sensitive. Maybe not, you know, I'm not sure how frequently news articles are submitted, but you know, I, <laughs> no, I'm not expecting this to get a news article in every single tick of the S&P e-mini, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> there are, you know, close to 10,000 symbols out there. So maybe it's just uh, the impression that I got here from the news article, I mean, from the news um, application. Let's go here to, Add another filter. So just so we can talk about all the different filters that you can put into the news window, uh, which gives you a little bit of flexibility and that ability, you know, to get news articles on the topics that you want. Let's go to data and add a news filter. And uh, instead of just selecting one symbol, let me do something here. I'm going to do the Dow 30 or any other index. I think there is going to be a limitation to the number of symbols that you can load up into a, a multiple symbol list. I'm gonna try it here. I know that last time when I tested this functionality on the news window, it was broken, but we'll test it. That's why we do these things uh, live and we uh, talk about the functionality. I'm gonna go here to symbol list. Um, I'm going to, yeah, from the drop down, I have a list of uh, recently used symbols that I can use but I'm just gonna click on add list over here on the right. And while that pops up, let me 
pause my Slack notifications so that I try to do this at the beginning of the class every day, but sometimes I forget and I can just hear, you know, the, the alerts going off in the background. They just become a little bit distracting. So here I'm going to go to trade station symbol lists. I'm going to go to the index components. I'm going to open up the Dow Jones indexes and I'm going to select the Dow Jones industrial average, which has 31 symbols. I'm going to, I, I can view the symbols if I want. You know, these are the 30 companies that make up the Dow Jones Industrial. I may not want the symbol of the Dow Jones itself, dollar sign INDU. So I can modify that before creating the list. I'm going to click OK. All the symbols are added here, but I'm going to scroll to the very top, select the Dow Jones, which I said I don't want it here on the list, and I'm going to remove it. So you can do, you can remove or add symbols while you're in this dialogue before it gets applied. So this is a symbol list or a news filter that has a symbol list. So I will only get news articles on the symbols that make up the Dow Jones Industrial, which is, which is interesting, right? Let's go ahead and click OK. And this is, um, I get a data request failed. So this is something that I have to bring up to engineers and engineering's attention. Now, if I have multiple positions open, let me see, let me create a, let me create a different, let me, let me create a multi-symbol news filter using a different process and see if I get similar results. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to dock my position graph bar because I want to have a visual of my open positions and add my open positions to a custom symbol list, or I'm going to add them manually. I can do it as a custom symbol list, but I'm I have to do some extra steps to do that. I can probably show you how to do it, but for now, I'm going to add the menu. I'm going to go here to right click on the panel data and add the news filter. I'm going to go to symbol list and I'm going to start typing the symbols as I see them right there at the top. I see Disney, it's my first one. I'm going to hit enter. You can see that it adds it right here to the, to the view. I see F, which is Ford. HD, Home Depot, KO for Coca-Cola. I see NXGN and I see WMT, all right? Um, and I'm gonna call this my positions. Let's click okay. Okay, so you can see that adding the symbols manually seems to work. So now I have a, um, a news filter here that I call the my positions. And since I specified the symbols that are that make up this filter, I only get news articles based on my positions or the positions that I currently have open. In addition to that, you know, since these are things that are in my account and I would be very interested if there's a news article about any of these just to be watchful of uh, market performance and, or what's happening to that stock, um, I'm going to set up an alert. Now, that is something that it's very, useful on the trade station desktop. A lot of platforms out there, yes, they do get news or get you news, but sometimes uh, how quickly can you get an alert on something uh, that you're holding a position on? So here on my positions, I can right click, go to search news. And for my positions news filter, I can go to the alerts tab and enable the alert. I can use the global messaging preferences, the one that I'm using for everything else, or I can choose custom settings. And I can configure this and say, I want an audible alert. I want maybe a good sound. That's a Nauga. I want a visual. And maybe I want to set up an email to be sent to me. But once I have those um, alert settings checked off, I click OK. And everybody sees, I'm not sure if you're able to see it, but I'm. If you look at the left side of the name of my news filter, there's a little yellow bell. Maybe because of my graphics, it's really hard to see. It looks more like a dot, but that's just the bell letting you know that that particular news filter has an alert enabled. And as soon as it receives a news article, I should get alerted. Last time I received a, an article was one hour ago, but I'll just leave it here just in case I get something and you can see the alert play out in real time, okay? Let me mute my microphone. All right. Uh, 
Uh-huh. Yes, Jim, well, thank you. Thank you for checking that on. Check, thank you for checking that for me. Yeah, it seems like uh, it was probably too quick when I opened it and it remembered where my buttons were, but it seems like uh, what Jim tried, he restarted everything, uh, launched straight station again, and it was still having the problem. So thank you for, for checking that for me. Thank you, Myron, for also checking. Okay, so yes, if you wanna have a multi-symbol news filter, the way to do it is with symbols entered manually. Let me show you something else that I can do, that I would do if I have a, a lot of positions. You know, in this case, it was easy for me to enter the positions one by one because I only had six. You can see them right there on the top of my trade station inside of the position graph bar. But if I open up my trade manager window, let me just open up trade manager. All right, and I go to my positions tab. You see, I see all my positions listed here. I can highlight all the symbols by clicking and dragging, right click on the highlight, and I can choose this option that says append selected symbols to custom symbol list. And I can say, I'm not sure if I have a custom symbol list that says my positions. No, but if I did, I could select it and overwrite what was there, but I'm gonna create a list and go to custom symbol list and this is going to be my positions. Click OK and OK. So I created a custom symbol list with my position symbols. Of course, I can always change it and overwrite it, as I just said, in case you are in and out of positions on the go. So from the news window, I could have, let me right click on this filter, maybe data. Let me delete this filter remove news filter, and let me add it again. I'm gonna right click data and add a news filter. I'm gonna do a symbol list one more time, add a list, open up custom symbol list, and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to select my positions right here. I can view the symbols to double check. Notice that we have the six symbols that we started off with. I'm gonna click okay, and my name up, up here, Notice that the name at the very top of the dialog defaults to a list of symbols, which is um, not very descriptive. So I'm gonna call this my positions or open positions, whatever you wanna call it. Let me click okay. And that worked. So maybe it's the fact that we're going over a particular number of symbols. You know, my positions only has six symbols. The Dow 30 has 30. And that's probably why the data request failed. But we have, if you're looking for collections of news articles based on a, a group of symbols, then this would be the way to do it. So um, I find that, you know, very useful if you have a whole bunch of symbols and you want to be on top of news, news, news about those symbols, then you can set up a news filter and set up an alert on the specific uh, news filter. And last, uh, let's hear, let's go to data and add another news filter. You can do filters by keyword, pretty cool. So if I want uh, to get news on technology, maybe I type in the word technology, click okay. And then I'm getting news articles that reference the word technology. Maybe not in its title, but it will be inside of the code, inside of the article, the word technology would be referenced. That's uh, pretty cool. Um, you know, if, um, if I go to data and I go to add news filter, let's say that I'm trading uh, some futures. Well, futures is kind of tricky because um, you either have to get news on the particular commodity. For example, if I type in crude oil and um, I search by keyword, I've noticed that sometimes if you for futures, if you uh, filter by symbol, you get no news article. I suppose because the news articles reference the commodity by its name. It doesn't usually refer to them as uh, with the symbol. Like for example, crude oil, it doesn't say, you know, CLM22, it just says crude oil. So I figured, or at least I've seen that a lot of times if you wanna create some news filters that filter uh, news articles on futures, use the commodity name itself. In this case, I'm using crude oil. I click okay. And then I get, you know, these um, articles that 
talk about the commodity in question. So that would be the way to do it. So here, notice that I already have six different news filters. That's, I find that also to be a nice feature of the trade station desktop where you can have these multiple filters working for you, uh, setting up maybe different alerts. Maybe you have some specific sound for your technology news articles, and then you have a totally different tune for any news article that comes through for your open positions. That would be an idea, something that you can set up right here on the trade station desktop. A couple more things that you can do here before I jump over to the time and sales. If I go to the settings and I go to, well, window just gives you the ability to change the font, the colors, and so forth. General, no, it doesn't really matter. Not, not big there. But if you go to data and search news on providers, on providers, you can see that everything is kind of grayed out. But if uh, it's grayed out because of this checkbox, it says display news for all available providers. If I go here and I uncheck this, then I'm able to uncheck Benzinga, which defeats the purpose of having a news application because then you wouldn't get anything. We still have that provider checked is the only one that we have. But over here, we have categories and sources that we can modify. So we can go here to the edit button. And this is categories and sources that we can modify from the Benzinga provider. So here, categories is defaulted to all. But if I click on custom and I click on add, it gives me a dialogue with every single category that is provided by Benzinga. And you can further filter your news articles based on what's provided here. So if you want news articles only from CNBC, it's listed right there. If you want uh, news articles that only deal with ETFs, it's right there. You know, Here we have some futures categories. So sometimes, you know, by, by selecting crude oil, like we did here in our news app, yeah, you probably get news articles on crude oil, but they're not probably not all related to futures. So if you want to make sure that the news articles that are coming through are futures related, then you can maybe select futures right here from, from the categories. I haven't you know, used these filters um, a lot. A lot of times when I pull up the news window, since it's not updated so frequently, you know, it doesn't matter that I get everything. But if you do want to drill down and say, I only want to get news articles that are on this category, you can come here and select one, two, or three multiple ones. For example, I can select, let me see if I can do a multiple selection here. Let's suppose that I want to do futures, maybe Forex, maybe global. Maybe I want to do some, um, I don't know, markets, media. So you can select multiple categories and click OK. And you can see that they all come here. And these would be the categories that your news articles will stick to. All right, so, uh, so there's a couple settings here. A story can be listed in any of the selected categories or a study or story must be listed in all of selected categories. If you select the second radio button, of course, you are restricting the filtering too much and you may not get any results at all. So just be careful about the option you select here. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna select it on all, which is my default. And I'm gonna cancel, or before canceling, not only you can change the categories, but also the sources. So here, if I click on custom and I click on add, you can see there's many sources to, <laughs> to choose from. <laughs> not really, there's only Benzinga. So not much you can do here because our source provider is the only one we have. So that's our source. The only thing you can change is categories. Maybe down the road, if TradeStation provides uh, different uh, news providers in this list, we can further you know, select which one we want. Okay, so I wanted to give you a little bit more uh, information here. So by default, we see all categories, all providers, everything that comes through the pipe. And uh, you, I think that's it. You know, those those are the main you know talking points of the news article. I don't see any questions here in the chat, so I'm going to assume that everything is um, is good. Let's go over to our next application, which is the time and sales apps. Time and sales. Here it is. Um, 
you can see right here on the top left, the symbol is Walmart. And what this window is showing me, it's a printout of every single, or a print, you know, at least it's not on paper, but it's a print of every single trade that happens on Walmart, on any exchange, which is pretty cool. This is like looking at the market traders tape of every single trade that comes through. I have no filters turned on. I have nothing that would limit the number of trades that are coming through here. And you can see that the times are stamped up to the second, not the milliseconds, but just the second. So this is 1 p.m. or 1.05 p.m. and 45 seconds as we speak. You can see that sometimes we have groupings of trades coming through because that's the way that they're reported by the exchange. But it tells you not only the size of the trade or how many shares were traded, it also tells you where the price is. Now, there's a lot of colors and a lot of styling here in the time and sales that we're going to talk about right now. First thing that I'm going to point out is what's happening here in the price column. Sometimes you see light gray, sometimes you see dark gray. What is that? Well, the light gray and the dark gray go in connection with the plus or the minus that appears right after the price. So for example, let me scroll down. When you scroll the window down a little bit, you will see how the window pauses, which is great for you to drill down on certain features. I know that this is something that was recently fixed. I'm not sure if you guys have been here with me for a while, but I, I remember that last time when I pulled up the time and sales, it wouldn't stop. That was fixed. So now if you scroll up, it stops and you're able to drill down on some of the prices. So you can see that anytime that the price is followed by a plus is colored in a light gray. And anytime that is followed by a minus, you see the dark gray. When there's no plus or no minus, there's no color in the background or it doesn't change the color with the colors. The color of the background by default is black. This is just keeping track of upticks and downticks. And look at the price column because every time that there's an uptick where the price changes to the upside, you're gonna see a lighter shade of gray and a plus sign letting you know, hey, the price is higher. And whenever you see the minus means that there's been a down tick because so the price went down one tick or two and it has the minus and it has a darker gray letting you know where the down ticks are. Is that helpful? Of course, I mean, you can see, you know, at a glance, if there's more upticks or downticks or there's no ticks or upticks or downticks at all, sometimes, you know, the price may be consolidating and moving sideways and you don't get as many upticks and downticks. But the concentration of upticks and the concentration of downticks may be very telling about a particular market. Now, some of these windows are going to be updating really fast. Let me scroll up again. Walmart, you know, it has a decent speed in the sense that it trades very frequently, but some, some windows here are gonna be impossible to keep track of. For example, let me go here to apps and I'm gonna open up a second time and sales window. I think you can have you know up to 20, I think it's a limitation. But here on the right-hand side, I'm going to put up um, Spider. Now Spider, you can see the speed at which it trades. I mean, sometimes I'm not sure who here has the capability of read the information that's going through. It's cool by measuring the speed. You know, if it, this is just scrolling really fast, I can tell that there's a lot of trading activity going on and not necessarily in size. These are individual trades that are being executed in the market. You know, so that if there's more traders interested in Spider, of course, it's going to increase the speed at which the trades are going to go through. Now, if I want to pinpoint on any of these trades and see the specific time, that they happened, just remember that you can just scroll a little bit. Scrolling a little bit to the bottom freezes the view. You can see my scroll bar over here on the right-hand side as it pushes to the downside, letting me know that up here, there's a whole bunch of information that you're not seeing. Actually, it, I think when it reaches the bottom, it automatically jumps for you. Let me, turn, let me see that again. Maybe they just added that feature. So you're gonna go here to the bottom. Okay, so, okay, that, that's okay. I can live with that. You know, so when the scroll bar reaches the bottom, you can see it automatically shifts to the top and then starts updating in real time again. 
I suppose, you know, the reason why they did that is because the time in sales, it's designed to be a real-time window. You see the real-time trades that are coming through for any instrument that you're trading. And you can see, you know, the volume characteristics of these securities by, you know, and you can compare them by just having multiple time and sales window open. Let's talk about other colors. Yeah, let me remove the, the one for the for spiders and let's uh, look at here at the Walmart time and sales. So we talked about the color shade right there inside the price column. There's other coloring here that is happening on certain rows. Some rows are colored in red, some are colored in green, and some of them are colored in white. Everybody sees that? The reason why that happens is because whenever you have a trade that happens at the ask, the trade that happens at the ask, that means that it's favoring, it's favoring the buy side, or at least favoring the sell side, because the asking price, of course, are the sellers. So if it happens at the ask, it means that it's more like a, like a sell transaction, selling transaction, because it favors the selling side. I, I must have, I think I said that backwards at the very beginning. So a trade that happens at the bid, though, it's a trade that favors the buying side, and it would be considered a trade that happens at the buy. Not necessarily that it's only a buy, because remember that every single trade has two parties, has a buying party and it has a selling party. Uh, sometimes, you know, I get a question from trade station clients saying, can I split this up into buys and sells? I want to see all the buys and all the sales, but that's... That's almost impossible to do. I mean, a trade has both parties, a buyer and a seller. What you can have, though, is an indication of what that trade or what side that trade favored. Did it favor the buying side or the selling side by taking a look at the price that it hit? If it hit the asking price or it hit the bid price. There are some other trades. Here we have one that says odd lot. Sometimes you're gonna get these trades that have some additional information with them. This odd lot just is being colored uh, white just because it's an odd lot, because sometimes um, it meets the condition of having at the bid or at the ask, but those are not colored either red or green. So what is an odd lot? You are going to see a lot of uh, interesting conditions in that, in that condition column. And that condition just is, is not something that TradeStation is tagging along with the trades. It's just information that is coming from the markets. And a lot of times it's interesting to know what that represents. How do I find out? Well, let me go here to settings. I was going to go from settings, but I'm going to right click instead. I thought that settings would provide me a help option, but it doesn't, but you can find a help right here from the right click menu. Let me see if I can show you a quick way to access that. So this is um, when you right click on an application and you go to help, it opens up documentation directly on that time and sales window. But I'm gonna scroll down and uh, let's see, there we go. Right here at the bottom, there, the third link down says time and sales condition and subtyped reference. Now, always remember, let me look over here. Notice how the column here is condition. So looking at that topic, oh, the topic says time and sales condition and subtype reference. Let me click there. And it gives you all the possible conditional pieces of information that can be tagged along with a trade. If I look at odd trade over here, it's a lot here, right? But odd lot is an order amount for a security that is less than the normal unit of trading for that particular asset. Odd lots are considered to be anything less than the standard units of trade. A standard unit of trade for any stock, I think, unless that has changed recently. But my understanding is that the standard lot for trading any symbol is 100 shares. So you can see that anything that has less than 100 shares is labeled as an odd lot. Not sure that that is helpful because, you know, for securities or symbols that are really um, high priced, you may get a lot of these. So I, I like to color, you know, my, 
my trades based on where they're happening. And it seems like the odd lot is taking over that. I think we can modify that and still, you know, keep our green and our reds, but I'll show you where you can enable or disable that. But again, if you have some information in there that you really don't understand what it is, right click, go to help, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll find a link here that says time and sales condition reference. It opens up a table and it tells you everything that can be tagged along to a trade. So use that as a reference to find out what that means. Uh, let me see if I find, I think I, I saw one, but it was it here is, there's one that says burst basket. <laughs> Funny name, but it's a burst basket and this would also appear inside of that table. So burst basket, burst basket, is a trade wherein the equity specialist acting in the aggregate as a market maker purchase and sell the component stocks required for the execution of specific basket trade. So yes, details about what the trade means. I think everyone would benefit from that. Um, let's disable the conditional color because the white is taken over by showing you an odd lot. Let me go to settings and let me click on window. And this is not where that color is. You can go to the color here. The color here, oh yeah, it is. <laughs> I thought it wasn't, but it is. So in the, let's go back in there. So you know exactly where it is, settings and click on window. I don't know why I had the idea that I needed to go to customize the symbol, but here I customize the window and I go to the color tab. This is where you control the colors. Specifically, you know, the conditions. Uh, trade. So conditions. Conditions is which price is it hitting? I may have, you know, said this incorrectly just a moment ago. These, the odd lot is not a condition. It's actually a subtype. That's why when you go here to the documentation, you know, the link here says time and sales condition and subtype reference. So what I was calling a condition is not really a condition, it's a subtype. Condition is where the trade was happening. So if, he, if I go here to the color tab, you can see that under conditions, we have above ask, at ask, at bid, below bid, and between bid and ask. And you can change the colors of each one of these. What I wanted to disable is the subtype coloring. So here under subtypes, you're gonna find every single piece of information that we also see on that table that you can disable. I'm going to uncheck this and then click OK. So now take a look at the odd lots. Now, instead of, uh, instead of seeing the odd lots white, they're just taking on the color based on of, of what price they hit, the bid or the ask. You know, at the bid, it's going to be bright red. At the ask, it's going to be bright green. Sometimes you're going to get darker colors, or darker green and darker red. Let me see if I find it. Yeah, when it's, well, that seems to be dark red. Oh, oh the, OK. Maybe I said that incorrectly again. The bright red is below the bid and the dark red is at bid. Same goes with the green. Sometimes at the ask, it's gonna be more like a darker green. Let me see if I find something that it's brighter green. These are all, here we go. I'm not sure if you can tell the difference. Hold on, this is jumping around way too fast. Let me find another one. Here it is. One right here, above ask. You can see the difference in the brightness of the green. Um, you can change those colors. You know, if you still uh, find it really hard to tell one green from the other, you can go to settings, window, and change those colors here so you can tell what prices are hitting or what trades are hitting the bid or hitting the ask or are above the ask or below the bid because that's something else that can happen. All right, so interesting information to look at. Uh, so subtypes we talked about already, corrections. This is if corrections are being sent. The same concept, uh, the same concept applies. If there's a correction being sent through the exchanges and the market is submitting that as a new trade, but it's labeling it as a correction, you will see it clearly right here inside of the time and sales. The trend is that shade of color that happens on the price column. 
So if you don't like the, the light shade of gray and the dark shade of gray, you can turn that off by just checking enable and it just gives you price columns, no shading, up to you. So this is a, a window that is fully customizable and you can turn off or turn on different features here to make it look the way you want. Um, but um, what, how does this help you? What is this application telling you? Well, we started saying that it does give you a print of every single trade that happens uh, in real time. One way that I would use it, you no, know, is just to find out when the big players are coming into the market. You know, I can have this time in sales, it shows me everything, but um, whenever there's a big trade, I would probably want to know, you know, maybe that's a mutual fund or, a, um, or an institutional trader that is submitting a large order. A large order. Uh, the reason for the large order could be anything, but um, I could be you know, looking at other market conditions and trying to determine why is this large order being placed at this moment and which side of the market is it favoring? Is it being filled at the bid or being filled at the ask? That's interesting information. So what I do is most of the time I keep one that has everything. And then sometimes I just open up another one on the same symbol, but filter it. How do I filter this? I go to data and I go to, no, I go to settings and I go to symbol. You know, sometimes you edit the symbol in data and sometimes you edit the symbol in settings. Some inconsistencies on the menu structure that I'm not a fan of, but um, if it's not in one, it's gonna be in the other. So my suggestions for you too, Look in both places. So symbol, settings, symbol. And here I can say, we have some, um, this is showing the last three. This is the, the first time that it loads, it's gonna load the last 300 ticks just to make the window load faster. But over here, I can say, instead of showing me all trades, show me trades that are greater or equal to 1000 shares or contracts. I'm gonna click okay. And this is what I get. Now, when you, what this means is that there was a trade for 1,100 shares at 1.21 p.m. and 16 seconds, and we can see more trades coming through. Now, they're still part of the main window here. We see that trade of 26,000 shares. Now, that, that trade of 26,000 shares is huge. If you think about it, you know, it came through at, at 1.22. It was above the ask. For 26,200 shares, how much is that trade? What is the cost of that trade? If we take the 26,000 shares, the 26,200 shares, and we multiply by the price at which they were executed, which is $151.34 and a half cents, that gives you a trade that is close to $4 million. Now, to be able to execute a trade for $4 million, you know that that must have been either an institutional trader, a hedge fund, a mutual fund, somebody that is moving large amounts of money and the trade occurred above the ask, which is favoring the selling side on stocks of Walmart. Now, I don't trade Walmart. I'm not really familiar with its financial or what's happening to Walmart, but I, if I were trading Walmart, I would be very interested in what's happening to when these big players are entering the market and why they are. There's not much information. This is every, anything, I mean, this is everything we get uh, in regards to the trade, but it, when we use this in combination with other trading tools and indicators and stuff, and stuff, right? <laughs> we may get a better picture of what's happening on some of these symbols. Then Jim says it could be a pro trader who is rich with big bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, like Jim, right? <laughs> uh, this info is also available for futures exactly you can just pull up the symbol if i do a quick change here to esm 22 of course this is uh filtering by a thousand so i changed the wrong the wrong window uh just be aware of the filters that you have applied because sometimes you know it'll, it won't show you anything so here on this one on the left esm 22 there we go. You can see how this is printing the futures trade as well. And you can do the same type of filtering as well to know when the large players are coming through.
Interesting, Jim. Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay, so you can see that every time that I change the symbol here, this one resets. Um, you can go to um, you can go to some of these symbols. Like go to uh, the symbol settings. Go back here to settings symbol, and try to load more data. Like load last five minutes. That's something you can do. Here's uh, something that will limit you though. Maximum number of items to display starts off at 300. So even if you change the time frame here, just take a look at this other box here because that is also limiting you. I believe the maximum you can put here is 10,000. Now that's just the limitation of the time and sales. So don't expect that you can load the whole day in here. This is more intended for you to look at it in real time. But when you want to drill down to some historical time periods, you're limited to this. So just uh, try to work with the settings to load the specific time frame that you're looking for. So I'm going to do 10,000. And notice that I only get information or the trades that happened at about 121. Um, if I, even if I go here to settings and I go to symbol and I say, I want to see the entire day and then click OK, it's not going to give you the entire day. Notice that we only go back to 1, 10 p.m. So this is it's, it's impossible that we didn't get these big trades at the beginning of the day when the markets are more, most active. But if you really wanted to know what happened at the beginning of the day, you probably have to do some other settings. And you have to go here to symbol and say, since we have that limitation of the window, only being able to load 10,000 items, we can do a time frame and say, load from 9.00 a.m., not from 00, 9.30 a.m. I'm going to do it to 9.32 a.m. Maybe because I want to load the first two minutes of data and only show the trades that are greater than 1,000. I'm going to click OK. And here we go. So starting at 9.30, not sure it was able to go to 9.32. It seems like it didn't. But you can see the size of the trades that were submitted at the very opening of the market. Interesting information, right? Um, this helps you also take a look at what's happening to your orders. I find that a lot of traders don't fully understand the way that the orders are being executed in the market. You know, they, they may think that by seeing a price being traded in the market, that that would give them an execution as well. And sometimes they see their orders just sitting there and not getting filled and they wonder, well, if it's getting, if it's traded, why is my order just sitting there and not being traded? Opening up the time and sales and loading the trades as they happen around the time that you submitted your order may be very revealing as to the way that the markets behaved. Because yes, maybe the trades did, or maybe there were trades that happened at the price that you wanted, but it could have been, you know, orders that were sitting in front of you or in, yeah, in front of you in line, waiting to get executed. Maybe they got there first than you did, and you were back in the line waiting for your shares to get filled. And the fact that the price was traded doesn't mean that you're going to get an execution because you're in line. So sometimes looking at all the different trades that happen around the time that I send an order sometimes is very revealing as to how the market behaves and how it filled orders that were you know, targeting that price that I wanted, all right? Let's see. Can the time and sales data be copied to a spreadsheet? So this data cannot be copy and pasted in the sense of highlighting copy and paste. Although if you use uh, some of the programming tools like easy language objects, there is a way for you to print this data onto Excel, but only with additional easy language programming. There's no copy and paste at this time, unfortunately. All right, this is it. This is the end of my session. I wanted to highlight these two applications, news app and also the time and sales. Use them, practice with them. If you have any questions tomorrow, we're going to meet at 1130 for Ask the Experts. Everyone is invited. Let's talk about TradeStation and answer your questions. So I'll see you guys tomorrow at 1130. At 1230 tomorrow, we have David Russell with his market insights. And um, I'll follow up with, a, with a, um, a, an alert, like a text message to the 
channel dashboard so you know exactly what the schedule is for this week. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your support. And I'll see you next class. Goodbye, everyone. Great having you.